If you're here because you want to get into digital art, but you don't know what you need or where to start, you're in the right place. Have a seat and I'll teach you about the tools you need to get started creating digital art. The four key components I'll discuss are computer hardware, drawing input, art software, and digital art resources. Since digital art is created on a computer, you'll of course need a computer. It doesn't necessarily have to be a desktop or laptop. There are some options that might surprise you. You will also need a drawing input. This is typically a pen, but it could also be a mouse, finger, or eye gaze. I'll start by sharing the least expensive digital art workstations and work up to the most expensive. Among the lowest cost digital art workstations are smartphones. In recent years, smartphones have become a legitimate tool for making art. The screen on a phone is quite small, so while you can draw directly onto a phone screen, there is a better way to do it, which we will discuss in a bit. Another downside to working on a phone is that you'll probably be using your finger to paint. While this worked well when you were three, I wouldn't recommend it now. Your meaty fingers are no good for drawing. If you're lucky, your phone comes with a pressure-sensitive stylus. But if not, then you'll be better off drawing with a passive stylus rather than drawing with your finger. There are lots of options for passive styluses, but they all do pretty much the same thing. Disappoint. Passive styluses can't even sense pen pressure which let me tell you really takes the fun out of drawing. If this is all you got, don't feel bad. You're way better off than you would have been a few years ago because painting on a phone has come a long way. Don't let a lack of tools stop you from getting into digital art. Everyone has to start somewhere. Shoot, my first tablet was a VTech video painter that plugged directly into a VCR and look at where it got me. Another recent development is the ability to connect a drawing tablet to a smartphone. This solves the pen pressure issue and makes drawing on a phone feel very close to working on a laptop. A smartphone is far less powerful than a desktop or laptop, but if you're just doing simple artwork, then it should be more than adequate. Of course, this all depends on your phone specs. Newer high-end phones are going to be faster than old budget phones. One of the most affordable tablets to use with a phone is the Wacom Intuos, but the drawing experience is quite limited. If you want the ultimate smartphone drawing experience, you can connect a Wacom One display tablet and draw directly onto a 13 inch screen. I have some reference videos that will show you how to connect your tablet with your phone. A step up from a smartphone is a tablet like the Samsung Galaxy Tab series or the non-pro version of the iPad. This is essentially just a larger smartphone. So while it might have a bigger screen and may or may not have a pressure sensitive stylus, it's only a slight improvement over working on a phone. And as with smartphones, you may be able to connect select Wacom devices to your Android tablet. Another low-cost digital art computer is the Google Chromebook. These are very basic laptops that don't have a lot of power or features, but they do have a larger screen. And as of recently, you can connect select Wacom tablets to a Chromebook. This enables you to use a better drawing experience than what the Chromebook offers with its own pen. Chromebooks are underpowered for any heavy-duty digital art creation, but they would be more than adequate for a beginner or hobbyist who does simple artwork. Next up are all-in-one tablet computers like the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, Microsoft Surface Pro, and the Apple iPad Pro. These are fully functional Windows or Mac computers that have built-in display tablets you can draw directly onto. While they are substantially more powerful than a phone or a Chromebook, they can feel sluggish compared to the performance you could get from a laptop or desktop. The other downside is that these tablet computers are not usually upgradable, so you risk the hardware becoming obsolete faster. Also, your computer is combined with your tablet, so you can't upgrade those components independently of each other. For example, a Wacom tablet might be useful for 10 or more years, whereas a tablet computer might only last for three or four years until it requires replacing. Another downside is that each of the best all-in-ones have their flaws. The Mobile Studio Pro is amazing to draw on. It's one of the best drawing tablets I have ever used, but it's very laggy and can't handle demanding art applications. The Surface Pro does not have as good a line quality, and it lacks the features of a Wacom tablet. And the iPad Pro suffers from the iOS software library, which pales in comparison to what's offered on Windows. Laptops and desktops are the ultimate digital art workstation, because they are powerful enough to run the most demanding art applications, and they can store large amounts of artwork files. You may also want to record or live stream your art, in which case you will want to take advantage of multiple displays, and advanced computer hardware. I have an article that describes how to optimize your computer for digital art on my website at aaronrutten.com. When choosing digital art hardware, 
You may also want to consider portability. Aside from the desktops, these options are all portable, so you can enjoy digital art at home, school, or while traveling. It is possible to draw with a mouse, but I highly recommend purchasing a Wacom tablet because drawing with a mouse feels like drawing with a rock, and that's even worse than drawing with a finger. Though you can make art without a drawing tablet, it's quite difficult. I know not everyone has access to a tablet, so I don't want to discourage anyone from getting into digital art if their only barrier is owning a tablet. Artists have made amazing artwork throughout the 70s, 80s, and 90s using only a mouse and continue to do so to this day. If you must draw with a mouse, that's perfectly fine, but you should consider using a vector program like Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape because it may be easier to control your lines. A drawing tablet is a device that you plug into your computer. It's a pad, either with or without a built-in display, that you draw onto with a pen. The input from your pen is sent to your art software, and you can use it to draw and paint in place of a mouse or your finger. Drawing on a tablet is the closest you'll get to feeling like you're drawing traditionally. I highly recommend it because it really improves the digital art experience. Some examples of drawing tablets are the Wacom Intuos and Wacom Cintiq. Windows and Mac computers are required for these kind of tablets. Linux is also supported if you're computer savvy enough to install the special Linux driver. If you're using a computer with a proprietary stylus, then you need not purchase a drawing tablet unless you want to upgrade to something better. In my opinion, a Wacom tablet is going to perform better than whatever is built into your device, whether it's a Chromebook or a Samsung Galaxy Tab. Before you go out and buy a drawing tablet, check out some of my reviews for recommendations. It's really easy to waste your money on a poor quality tablet, so let me help you pick a winner. Just to give you a quick idea of cost, the cheapest Wacom tablet is around $60, but I'm sure you could find a used or refurbished Wacom tablet for less than that. They often pop up in thrift stores, and you can find the drivers online. The advantages to using a drawing tablet are that you'll have full control over pen pressure sensitivity and opacity. You may even be able to utilize pen tilt and rotation. You'll be able to make larger gestures on a larger drawing surface. You'll have a better quality pen that produces better line quality. You'll be more comfortable and drawing will feel more intuitive. You may have access to additional features like express keys and multi-touch. Drawing tablets are reusable when you upgrade to a new computer. And if you're drawing on a phone or a tablet, the drawing tablet allows you to free up your display and prevents your screen from getting worn. In addition to a computer and drawing input, you also need software to make digital art. While the computer is kind of like your desk or the environment you make art in, man, that's one expensive desk, Software is the brushes, paint, canvas, and everything else on your desk. Now at this point you're like, dang Aaron, I have to buy a computer and software? You gotta be kidding me. The good news is that you don't have to buy software. There are several really good free art applications out there. That's in addition to the dozens of excellent paid applications, my favorite being Corel Painter. Some Wacom tablets even come with free or trial bundled software. It can be difficult to choose from so many options, but a good way to narrow down the choices is to think about what your needs are as an artist. Is your artwork fairly simple or very complex? Simple art would be cartoons, comics, and line art with fills. Once you start adding lots of layers and emulating traditional styles or media, then that would be considered complex. Art software has varying degrees of complexity as well. It can be very simple with basic brushes, or it can be very complex with realistic simulations of paint. The latter requires a more powerful computer, or else you will experience a lot of lag. Or in layman's terms, the brushes will feel very slow to work with. Lag gets worse when you try to make large artwork, so the type of computer you're working on is ultimately going to determine what kind of art you can make. If you are doing simple line art with flat color fills or airbrush shading, then just about any basic art app will do just fine. Some examples are Medibang or Sketchbook. Though you could use something more complicated, it would just add clutter. If you're looking for an art application with more features, then you can step up to Krita, Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint Pro, PaintStorm Studio, or ArtRage. If you're trying to simulate realistic dripping paint, then you're going to need software that is more geared toward natural media simulation, like Corel Painter, Rebel, or Adobe Fresco. If you're painting on an Android device, you can now experience the full versions of powerful art apps like Krita and Clip Studio Paint, which have been ported to Android. Infinite Painter is another great Android app. You're sacrificing virtually nothing in terms of software to make art on a phone. If you're doing more than drawing and animating or making comic layouts, then that's a consideration as well when choosing your software. 
I'd recommend starting with the free art apps and trials of the paid art apps, just to get a feel for the features in each application. I have reviews of a lot of the best free and paid art software you can watch if you're interested in learning more about that. The final component you need is a resource for tutorials to help you learn the various aspects of digital art creation. Digital art is complicated, and you really can't fully explain it in a single video. Here's where I would start. First, get comfortable with a drawing tablet. Second, choose a digital art application and learn as much as you can until you can draw and paint freely with it. And finally, learn about the principles of making art, really basic lessons. That may sound like a lot, but the good news is that you can learn all three of these principles simultaneously just by making art. It doesn't have to be good art or even anything that you show to anyone, just practice. And if you didn't know, I have a massive collection of free tutorials right here on this channel. And that covers a huge chunk of digital art fundamentals, so be sure to subscribe to this channel and binge watch the heck out of it. And if you're looking for more in-depth training, I also offer some paid content as well. You can find links to all this in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.